what's up all power ass crew today's video we're not working on a jeep but hey we all drive our jeeps if i can most of us i mine's a daily driver but not everyone who owns a jeep uses their jeep as a daily driver so we're putting in a backup camera it's going to have the windshield piece plus it's going to have the little camera that's uh back here next to your license plate we're going to show you guys how to wire it up wire it up so why would i show you how to wire it you would think it'd be easy in the instructions <laughs> Got this little light, get this little camera right here. But you know what? It's got a little red wire that attaches, and it's not the instructions. The instructions that come with it suck. So therefore, we're going to show you guys how to put these in. Yes, we're putting them in a 2007 model Chevy Impala, but hey, it doesn't matter what you drive. You can still wire it in because it's pretty straight up and simple. So yeah, what was I going with this next? So if it's the first time you guys hit Power Axe YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, all kinds of cool stuff that you just might learn something. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. Yeah, I'll get this out of there. I ain't very... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have to you don't even have to mess with me for me to screw up right now. So if it's the first time you guys land on Power Axe YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification so you'll be notified when I release these videos. And let's just get on with it. Come on, let's do it. Now to remove this trim piece coming down your A pillar, this little piece right here, you're just gonna hook your finger down on the edge of it and it just kind of snaps right back. And up inside here, you've got a T15 Torx. Get that out and we'll pull this panel back. Now as you pull it, you see that clip right here? It snaps up inside the screw right here. So if you feel like you've got some resistance when you're pulling on it, you know, just relax that you're not breaking anything. It's just that clip right there, you gotta pop it out. Then you pick up the A-pillar cover, lay it over to the side like that. And you got your little tweeter right there. The first thing you really need to do is figure out where you want your camera placed at. We're gonna leave it, we're gonna put it up here, but we're gonna leave enough uh, cord that we know it has the choice of moving around until you really get comfortable where you want it. And once you find that comfort spot where you, hey, I like it right here, then you can take small wire tied and tie your wiring up to uh, your mirror here. Some people want to get froggy, put it on their dash panels. Me personally, I'm not a fan of that because the camera's field of view, oftentimes you'll need to pick it up a lot of the surface of your hood or a lot of the surface of your dash uh, here and losing view of what is in front of you. So when you mount it up high, you get more field of view with your camera. So totally up to you. If you want to stick it to your dash, go for it, but you're gonna have to run your wiring different. Me personally, I'm not a fan of them being on the dash. Keep your cameras up high so you got more field of view of what's in front of you. Once you get your A pillar loose, we're gonna feed the wire back in behind all this. And it's gonna go in behind this black panel right here. These black panels have a little clip right here. If you grab just the first layer, you see you got a layer here and a layer there. If you pull the first outer layer, which unlocks the pin, it allows them to snap out. Because what happens is when you push these pins in, it goes like that, it spreads this out and forces it to lock in place. So when you pull that first thin layer right here, it pulls that pin back, allowing this to collapse in easily, pulling it from your trim panels. Now the voltage adapter that comes with this has the USB port in the back, so you don't lose accessibility for having your cell phone charged. So you can plug right here to touch up. <laughs> now we run the wire for our power adapter. <laughs> We run the wire for our power adapter and the power adapter plugs into a standard 12 volt receptacle and you see here it's got a USB port on the back of it so you still got access to charge your cell phone. This has a little trim plate here. Only thing you need to do is just flex it down a little bit and it exits out right here. Then we'll run our wire along and through here. Now we got the wire tucked coming in from behind that panel. We tucked it up underneath here to keep it out of the, so the pins, all everything holds the wire where it needs to be. Pretty, <laughs> YouTube is not my friend today. Okay. We've got the wire tucked in above the panel up in here. You see a little bit of it's hanging down right there. Then we tucked it in behind here. And the only reason I popped it, this is where some of the fuses are. I popped it out just so I could stick my hand in here and pull the panel back, flex it a little bit. You get it back in behind here. It's tucked in behind here. And then I bring the wire. You see it tucked in right there just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of, um, take a, a trim for like uh, working with door trim 
it's plastic so it doesn't scratch anything so you can tuck it up inside there and not mar any of your uh, plastic work then we'll bring it up to the a pillar and bring it across now one important thing to note when you run your wire up the a pillar here they put these plastic pieces there to you know, give them rigidity because it's pretty thin material here but you want to make sure you run your wire to a point to whatever you put your a pillar cover back up that it's got room up inside here not to pinch the wire or short anything out because that would be a bad thing so i've got it tucked over here because it goes up inside that i can't see what the viewfinder sees it goes tucks in behind here which is clearing everything over here so we're good to go on that then we'll tuck it up underneath all this and we'll drop the wire down here okay after we come out the a pillar i'm not going to lock the a pillar in quite yet because we still got to run the backup camera and it's going to be pulling up through here we got the wire power wire tight tucked up underneath here it's coming out here we got a lot of excess the reason we're leaving the excess out for right now we don't know how much uh wire we're gonna have left over for the camera the camera where it exits and how much we got left over for the camera to exit is going to determine how much power wire we're going to leave hanging out therefore we'll make everything all nice and tidy any excess uh power wire we have we can pull back down through here and tuck it up underneath the dash so we can keep it all nice and tidy and not have excess bundles of wire tucked in behind trim because whenever you take and just wad it and throw it up inside here you're subject for vibration rubbing against raw metal up inside here and causing shorts and such so we're going to run a camera wire next and that will determine how much excess we have left over here now installing our little backup camera here there is actually an orientation that there's the right way the wrong way and some um, displays have the ability to flip the image upside down or whatever so if you hang it like this you need the ability to flip the image into the uh, camera itself but it's supposed to hang like this is way it's supposed to go and I'm looking at it's kind of cool it's like I got a camera looking at the camera squirrel anyway but you see here let me so my viewfinder there we go because you see okay I'm gonna point it at the radio and I've got the bracket hanging upward. And you see the picture in picture here, that is the correct orientation. But if you was to turn it around the other way, now it's upside down. So, and you'll see when we go to mount it back here why I'm, why I'm showing you guys this. And to make the installation easier, this piece right here separate. And it has a little keyed index right there to make sure you plug it in the correct way. So now we're going to take this piece right here and show you guys how to mount it. This show you where we're, where we're going to run our wiring through at. Now, some people would think you take this right here. Let's just screw it to the loss of plate like this right here. That'd be fine. Yes, that'd be easy. No, don't do that. One, because you got your county sticker, date stickers, or whatever it is you got going on, it could be covering that up. Or if you got your state running across here and you got partially caught it covered up, it could make the popo mad. But what we actually should do is this bracket will bend it. And this right here is your license plate light here so we'll use those as mounting right there this isn't wide enough to span them both so just to place as much center as possible we'll probably use this hole here to go to that screw right there and it'll center it up pretty well then we'll bend the bracket down for it to shine back in behind the vehicle this shows a seven millimeter so we're just going to take out this one right here so it hangs pretty much in the middle as possible okay we've got our camera mounted and we'll do some final adjustments in it a little bit once we get everything you know hooked up and we'll tweak it a little bit make it all nice and neat and level we use this bolt here. This side right here is not mounted on the little tab, but it's pretty doggone stout. So it works out just fine. We're tucking the wiring behind here, but it's going to come over out in behind this panel on this side because it's where your wiring comes in through here. And we've already got this right here pulled off. But what you do is they push on, but you take a turn on like this right here. And after a couple of twists, now they're pretty much out of there. Pull and twist at the same time, they come right out. Pretty simple. Then once you get those loose, you pick it up, pull it out. And you see these little tabs right here? You sit down right inside those. So what you'll do is you'll grab hold of it, you'll pull upward, pull the corners off here and here, and the whole piece picks out. Now, right here is where the harness is coming through. And that's just a soft rubber grommet right there. So we're just gonna put a little small hole right there, just enough. To run the wiring through but not too big because you want this right here to still stay as a dust cover to protect everything on the inside so we're just going to puncture a little tiny hole to feed the wire through and you can see here where we push the plug through where it separates 
and we'll pull the wire on through it then we'll tuck it inside here and I'll go from the bottom and show you where it comes out from the bottom and then we'll feed it across over to the camera okay laying down under the car there's the tailpipe you ever see the Eddie, Mur Eddie Murphy movie you got the banana up the tailpipe yep that's it the wire comes from way up inside there so what we're gonna do at this point once we get enough of it fed across all the bumper bracing is gonna come across here and right here is where um, the camera drops through at matter of fact you see the camera right there oh strange strange And then of course we'll come across all the bumper bracing we'll plug it in up from up there then just simply take start at one side work your grommet around and most of the time they'll snap right back in the little red wire the little elusive red wire people ask all the time what is that for it's not in the directions that hooks up to your backup light because whenever you put your car in reverse your backup light kicks on and it throws the camera into hey uh, he's backing up mode so yeah we'll get to that here in a little bit but for right now we're gonna finish running this wire little thing I want to point out to you guys they give you a pretty long cable this obviously is a four-door car we stretched the cable out and kind of generically held it against the car to see hey before we go through all this headache are we gonna have enough cable it's gonna be pretty daggone close to be honest with you from what we can tell so to conserve cable length I mean you can get all nerdy and bring it all up inside here tuck it you know nice and perfect but the more upwards and more anything that's not heading toward the front of the car you're eating up length of cable so what we're planning on doing is it comes out here but we're just going to tuck it in behind through here and bring it in around all that because we've got to maximize the length of our cable and if you see right if i get the camera right there is the back seat of the corner of it that's where we're going to kick it up through from the inside feed it through there one of us feed it up the other person's going to grab it from the inside then we'll run it through the trim there but you really need to maximize the length of the cable that they give you it's not exactly you can be cutting and splicing well you probably could but it'd be a headache so this thing right here is where the little cargo net unhooks unscrew that because it also holds your tail light in and you may have to get to your wiring for your uh, backup light as well so we put, pull this back out of the way it just pulls down and we took all the wiring back in behind all the way up in there and i'm just laying inside the trunk now anyway it tucked way up inside there Okay, the wire was coming in from behind here you pull it in behind the seat here and you can see right here's the bottom of that trim panel they just tuck it along through here all the way around like that got the camera riding on the headrest i'll show you guys a neat little trick just take your fingers tuck under like right here keep your fingers just a little bit ahead of the wire and roll the wire in like this right here just take it tuck it in okay so I got a little ahead of myself this piece right here is pretty doggone rigid you could take it loose from right here but you got an airbag in behind here so you really don't want to mess with it no more than you have to just take your uh, interior door trim tool tuck it in up top right here and it'll provide a gap for you to tuck it wire it through here then you tuck it in here and the rest of it's just like I showed you back there and here we are back at the A pillar I finished tucking the wire down through here and I need to tuck it in a little bit more right there then um pull our pillar back a little bit it tucks up the side here just like our power wire did so from here we'll run it through here and it'll come out right there we got plenty of cable left over it actually reaches over to the corner uh the driver she's only like five foot tall so therefore we're not exactly sure where she wants the camera located at so we're having the extra length here will give a choice as to whether she wants it here or over there and once she finalizes where she wants it then you simply take up the excess slack Remember when I mentioned the red wire a moment ago? Well, here we go. This one's already out because this holds this trim piece. We still got to take that one out over there because that's going to be able to take out our tail light assembly to get to our wiring to hook up our backup light. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's one way up there, too. Then once you get those out, tail light assembly pulls out, then you can get to your bulb. And this right here, the lower one is your backup light. I'm going to go the extra mile for you guys. Uh, look here's your backup light socket here you can tell that but when it's on here the clearly inside the bottom here the aligns with the bulb here but hey look what the heck it's got three three black wires how do we know what we're doing so first of all we look at our black wires what's going where 
this particular black wire here is running up to here. So we know that's not it. Because it's going to be its own standalone wire going into the harness. And this is your harness here going to the rest of the body going up front for your brake light switches and all that fun stuff. So what we need to figure out is you look at the alignments of your black wires. And we already pulled this off here a moment ago. I will pull this on off for clarity for you guys. Okay, so you got your black wires running in here. One runs in here. That actually looks like a brown now that I look at it. Then you got black here, so you got brown and black. So, hmm, up the reserve. I got one of these gadgets here that I've shown you guys before on Tool Time Tuesday. These things are here are lifesavers for this particular type of purpose. So, I clamped it down here, but if you look real close where the clamp is, the alligator clip, it's got some bare metal going on here. You want a solid ground. So, we separate the harness. And, let's see, we're going to touch here. Hmm, we got nothing. We got nothing. We got nothing. And let's see. Now we got nothing. You know what that means? You don't have it parked. It's okay. not in reverse. It's, it's not in reverse. reverse. <laughs> Cars are in reverse. And we should have power, so we're going to roll over here. And we start testing. Look, we have light. We have no light. We have no light. We have no light so it means that one wire right there is good so now what we got to do at this point we take our tail light we're going to snap it back in place and we'll see which wire that that particular leg lines up to so we align our snaps here and plug them up which the lines up with this one here and so that's going to be the wire we're going to tap into so we'll pull our red wire from down deep into the abyss we'll cut it out the length so we ain't going to have a bunch of it hanging at the bottom and we'll splice it right into this right here pull that right there so we'll go we'll grab the tool and we'll do it we got to cut a little bit of this top wire off now for the people who's never used these uh, taps right here, this gap side right here, you're going to snap it over top of the wire, that's the live wire. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. Then you're going to take the wire that you're splicing in, run up inside there until you feel it bottom out. It will not go all the way through, it only goes so far that it stops. Then you take that metal connector right there and squeeze it down and that makes a secure connection you snap that over and we're good to go put your tail light back in by hooking up the red wire you see we're in standard mode right now as soon as it puts it in reverse Boom, it flips it into full backup mode. That way you get the whole screen so you can see when you back up and you ain't gonna do something crazy like run over, I don't know, my Jeep or something. No, don't blow, no, 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 don't run over my Jeep. No, it's actually right there, so. But anyway, it takes it out of reverse and it goes right back into standard drive mode where you got picture in picture. This is your reverse camera. This is your rear camera. This is your front camera. Pretty sweet. All right, my power ass crew, if you learned something, give me a thumbs up subscribe if you have it leave some cool comments down below and yes i realize this wasn't exactly what you call a review but it was more of an install because the directions that came with it well they sucked so again thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you have it and leave me some cool comments down below peace out later y'all yeah peace later